Hello everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives, man that feels good to say. Um, we're back again and today I'm talking about a, how we solved a data movement problem for one of our customers. Um, relatively easy solve in the grand scheme of things, but I thought it was a great example of how a clustered file system can benefit you even if you might not have the elegant, amazing networking infrastructure to go around it. A one gig Ceph cluster, we we're able to solve a problem that I wouldn't have been able to do with a bunch of single servers. All right, so before I dive into the meat of this, let's let's set the picture. Let's let's put all the constraints in. So this customer that we're working with, they came in and they asked us. Uh, they had a new workload and um, they're going to have to be moving data in a different way. So what they have built in their, in their infrastructure is a three node Ceph cluster. It's running on one gigabit networking and they're exporting all their data via CephFS and Samba. So everything in their shop communicates via the window shares, not in behind on CephFS, not through anything else. Everything's through Samba even if it's Linux, even if it's Windows, because they've got all their access control that way and that's just how it is, right? Okay, so everything's Windows connected, or sorry, Samba connected, in through Samba shares, and uh, they have a new workload. They, 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 their dev came to us and said, listen, I'm gonna have to be moving files from one share to another share, but it's user-driven. So I can't schedule it or do it at a certain point of time they're just going to be using the application that they write, click a button, it's going to instantly move the files over. Instantly. That's what they wanted. But the dev was aware enough to go, no, if I move data between two shares, although it's on the same file system, it's going to go out through the network to that end user's computer and then back into the other share. Um, they didn't want that because these files could be a couple gigs upwards to 100 gigs. And remember, we're on one gig infrastructure. Even if we weren't on one gig infrastructure, why busy the network if we don't have to? So he was like, listen guys, is there just an easy way I can get this done? Or even if there's not an easy way, is there a way we can get this done? Because I need this instantaneous. We all know why do we do this job is to give our end users, whether it's a, another business and their customers or your customers, that feeling of everything's just amazing, right? So. That's, that's what we're working with, a three node Ceph cluster, one gig, everything samba and we have to move a bunch of data from one share to another share. So uh, the, the astute in the crowd around me going, ooh, ooh, this is an easy one, this is an easy one. Just move the files, just MV in the Linux command line, right? All you have to do, remember I said it's CephFS behind the scenes. So although they're separate shares, the backing file system is all one file system. If I just MV a directory from one place to another place in the file system, it'll just update all the inodes and it'll just reappear in the other share. Share? Share? Um, because that's just how file system works, uh, how file systems work. It's, it's really cool. But for their end case, or for their use case, remember everything has to go through Samba because all their access controls and stuff like that. Um, they couldn't just have something go in behind the scenes and run that move command. So what did we do for them? We built them a back access door. We built them a Samba share that has one level up access to all their other shares. We've set permissions accordingly so only this one user can come in and do stuff. And when the end user in their application says, okay, I'm done with these files, move them, check them out, the code goes and uses the back door and moves from one share to the other share, still through Samba, but at this point, it's all within one network share and it's all within one file system behind the scenes and that move is instant. We can use that kind of inode rename rather than having to bomb it out over the network and back in. So that's it. That's how simple it was. We essentially, um, how do you move a lot of data fast? Well, sometimes just don't move it at all. Like that's really the answer here. And why I thought this story was kind of cool to share is not necessarily the complexity and the IT nerdery that you needed to have to solve it. It was more of the understanding, understanding the constraints you're given to you, understanding what the end user wants, 
and understanding that a highly available all one namespace Ceph cluster is an awesome, awesome solution for you, especially compared to a bunch of individual servers. Even if you're going to run like one gig networking or maybe not up to snuff stuff that uh, the documentation or stuff you should, says you should use. And um, because it gives you that flexibility to try to solve things this way. Anyway, that's it. That's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next tech tip.